Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Manager of Dataversity. We hope everyone is staying safe and well out there and we would like to thank you for joining the current installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance with Bob Steiner. Today Bob will be discussing data governance and policy management. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. If you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. Just click the chat icon in the bottom middle of your screen for that feature. And for questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or if you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag RWDG. And if you'd like to engage more with Bob and continue the conversations after the webinar, you can go to the Dataversity community at community.dataversity. .net. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce to you our speaker for the series, Bob Seiner. Bob is the President and Principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services and the publisher of the Data Administration Newsletter, tdan.com. Bob has been the recipient of the DEMA Professional Award for significant and demonstrable contributions to the data management industry. Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And with that, I will give the floor to Bob to get today's webinar started. Hello and welcome. Hi, Shannon. Hi, everybody. Uh, I want to echo what uh, Shannon said, and I hope everybody is staying safe and staying well, especially during these difficult times. But it's great to have you here and on this monthly, this month's installment of the, of the webinar series. As Shannon mentioned, the name of this webinar is Data Governance and Policy Management. Now, if you've been a listener or been an attendee of these webinars over the years, you know that I've done several webinars on data governance policy. And so we're not going to specifically, well, maybe a little bit, we'll be talking about specifically what it takes to build out a data governance policy. But we're going to talk mostly in this webinar about the data governance, uh, about data governance as a discipline and its relationship to policy management. So I'll refer to the other webinar. You may see a slide or two that talks to some of the things that I might have mentioned in the previous webinar about how to build out a data governance policy. Before I get started, I'd like to share with you a bunch of things that I'm involved with, and I tend to be involved with a bunch. Well, certainly there is this monthly webinar series. And in July, and so you know it's on the third Thursday of every month at 2 p.m., in July I will be talking about building a data governance roadmap. And there's lots of ways that you can register for the webinar. I talk a lot about non-invasive data governance and want to refer you to the book on non-invasive data governance that can be found at your favorite booksellers everywhere, I think. Um, also speaking, I'll be speaking at a couple of data diversity events that are coming up. Enterprise Data World will be in Chicago this year in October, and data, the Data Governance and Information Quality Conference, DGIQ, will be in Washington, D.C. in December. I do have a brand new piece of information to share with you, and I think Shannon's excited about this, and I'm certainly excited about this. I talk about the online classes that I provide, the non-invasive data governance one and the metadata governance one as well, but we have one that we're going to be introducing in August called Business Glossaries, Data Dictionaries, and Data Catalogs. So please keep an eye out for that. That's a great course it's about, you know, building requirements for these tools, what goes into these tools, governing the metadata in these tools. So that will be a great, uh, a great learning plan that will be available pretty soon. Um, Shannon mentioned the Data Administration Newsletter, tdan.com. That's available always uh, at tdan.com, and it publishes twice monthly, and it's always the day before the webinar. Since I'm on the third Thursday, um, the, the day before, I always publish new content. So the new issue of, of TDAN is out there. And last but not least is KIK Consulting and Educational Services. KIK stands for Knowledge is King, so the focus is on knowledge transfer, and I, and I call it the home of non-invasive data governance because that's where I do a lot of my writing and a lot of my work. So uh, again, good to have you with us today. We'll be talking about data governance and policy management. The, the subjects that I want to talk about in this webinar are going to be the relationship between data governance and policy management. You know, how to take a look through your organization to recognize what data policies are already in place. They may not be called data governance policies, but I can almost assure you that if you're a fairly sizable organization that you have data policies already in place in your organization. We'll talk about using data 
policy to bolster the data governance program. And then, like I said, I will spend a little bit of time talking about the makeup of a data governance policy or a policy that would be called a data governance policy. And then we'll talk about having a policy in place to manage your policies. So that's important, and it's very important that we share information about the policies that we have in place because, you know, if you think about trying to be as non-invasive as you can in, in the governance, you're going to look to whatever already exists within your organization. And even though you might have an IT security policy that's called an IT security policy, it may in fact be kind of a data governance policy. Any, almost any policy that you have is a governing policy. That's the reason they're put in place. But we'll talk about having a policy in place to manage your policies. So for the first part of this course, I want to talk specifically about the relationship between data governance and policy management. And I'm going to start out by defining what data governance is, uh, what policy management is, and how these things are similar, how these things are different, and how we can kind of tie these things together so they make sense. So we, we make certain that we're governing our policies uh, to almost the same extent that we're governing our data. We need to make certain that we have people that are accountable for the policies and making sure that they're being enforced, just like we need to have people that are responsible for data governance, and there's a need to enforce that as well across the organization. So I'm going to start out with my definition of data governance, and it's worded very strongly, and it makes some people cringe a little bit, but the idea is that it is important to get people to take notice of what you mean by data governance. So I uh, define data governance as the execution and enforcement of authority over the management of data and data-related assets. So execution and enforcement of authority, those are worded pretty strong. But the fact is that at the end of the day, no matter what approach you take to implementing a data governance program, the goal has to be to execute and enforce authority over the management of data. The idea is to get people to do the things that they need to do to improve the definition, the production, and the usage of data across the organization. So I like to word it strongly. I've had clients that have tempered the definition a little bit, but execution and enforcement of authority, there are some clients who say, you know what, we need to keep that as the wording for it because it, it is does have a little bit of muscle behind it, a little bit of, of you know, grit your teeth, sit forward in your chair, and take notice. What do we mean by executing and enforcing authority? So it is worded very strongly. It gets people to pay attention. Some organizations love it. Some organizations don't like it as much. And they uh, have even intended to temper the definition of data governance to more of the formalization of behavior associated with data, which is good because that's really what we're trying to do. <clears throat> Excuse me, but you know what? We need to make certain that we enforce authority over the management of the data. And the formalization of behavior, um, when I define the term data stewardship, which I'm not, I don't have a slide on that in this webinar, but data stewardship is the formalization of accountability for the management of data and data related assets. So people who um, define, produce, and use data, if we're going to hold them formally accountable for how they define, produce, and use data, um, that they are stewards of the data. They can't say, no, I'm not. I'm not going to protect data that is sensitive. Um, they are a steward. And I always tell people that we kind of need to get past that fact and understand that potentially everybody in the organization could be a data steward. So those are my definitions. That's really my definition of data governance. But what is my definition of what policy management is? And I thought that, that, that this would have to have been worded somewhere better than what I would think of for the definition. I'd use a cheeseburger definition, and I'll, I'll refer to that in a minute here. But I went to policymedical.com, and they had a really solid definition of what, a pol what policy management is. And so policy management is the creation or is is the process of creating, communicating, and maintaining policies and procedures within an organization. So, you know, the fact is that if we're going to have policies, we're probably going to have more than one policy. They're going to come from different parts of the organization. They need to be approved by people in the organization. So needing to have that process to create and to communicate and to maintain, you know, both policies and procedures within an organization, I just thought that that was a pretty much spot on definition of what policy management is. And, you know, again, left to my own uh, own devices here, I would say, well, it's the management of 
have policies, right? And I always tell people not to use cheeseburger definitions. Uh, the definition of a cheeseburger is a burger with cheese. But you know, we don't want to say that the policy management is the management of policies. You don't want to use the same words of what you're defining in the definition. So you know, but basically a policy is a code of conduct. And it is something that we are expecting people in the organization to abide by and, and to follow. So to, oftentimes when you create policies, they need to be filtered down to govern the enterprise and the divisions and the regions and the business units and the processes within the organization. So oftentimes policies are developed, but then they need to be communicated to people because people need to be know, need to know what their responsibility is in association with that policy and how the policy is going to be enforced across the organization. So the policy is a great thing to have, but you don't want to have a bookshelf full of policies that people don't know or they don't understand or they don't follow. Uh, if you do that, then you're going to have a, a bunch of documents that have taken a lot of time and effort and have required senior level approval, yet they're not doing for the organization what they really need to do for the organization. So I wanted to compare the definition of policy management to the definition, to a definition of data management that's kind of based on the definition of policy management, and then kind of throw in the definition of data governance after that as well. But I said that the policy management is the is the process of creating, communicating, maintaining the policies and procedures within the organization. Well, if you think about it, data management, and I know a lot of you are data management practitioners, you know, data management is the process of creating, communicating, maintaining data and metadata procedures within the organization. So helping to improve how the organization defines their data, produces their data, and uses their data. So those two definitions, I actually just stole from the policy management one, inserted data management, and then inserted data and metadata procedures instead of what they said, policies and procedures. So really, policy management is very similar to data management they're different in the fact that they, man that, that they manage different things, but they can be defined the same way. They are that process of creating, communicating, and so on within the organization. Now, if you compare it to data governance, and you could almost take the policy management definition and say that data governance is the process of creating, communicating, maintaining, and executing and enforcing rules and behaviors associated with data and metadata procedures within an organization. You know, that would be a, a valid definition for an organization to use, that that is really what data governance is all about. It kind of takes the best of, of, the, of the policy management definition and the data management definition um, to define data governance. So again, it's not a definition that I use regularly, but I think it fits in the narrative of what we are talking about today. And so you can see there's definitely a relationship between data governance and, and policy management. But we also want to ask the question, well, what is policy, what is effective um, policy management practice? You know, what will it do? And we, and certainly it moderates risk for your organization in a couple of different ways. So the, the effective policy management makes policies more accessible to your staff for guiding their activities and the sa and safety decisions that are made within the organization. I'm not necessarily talking about people safety, but safety for the organization. Um, also, um, an effective policy management practice protects an organization from litigation by staying up to date on standards and creating an audit trail in case of legal action. So having a policy in place, uh, many organizations, like I said before, have information security or IT security policies. They have data protection, data privacy policies. And what are they doing? They're setting their, their organization up to have that audit trail in case there's legal action. And that's where some data governance programs get started is they're kind of being spurred on by the fact that we have a policy that says that we need to do things that perhaps we don't do as well as we could. Um, you know, that we need to do that moving forward. So let's look at the similarities between governance and policy management. They're both codes of conduct. They both require that they're filtered down throughout the enterprise, down from the enterprise to the divisions or departments or lines of business, whatever you call them within your organization, to the different regions of the, of the country and of the world. You know, there's different policies that need to be in place for different regions of the world because the rules are different in different places. Um, we know that GDPR started in the uh, 
in the European Union, I believe, and uh, some of the local, some of the California Protection Act is is very localized. But you know, it, it changes region to region, and we need to make certain that our policy, our our policy and the data governance is able to adapt depending on the lines of business, depending on the regions, the business units, and the processes. And both of these things require leadership and approval. I mention often that the very first best practice that organizations use are that um, the, the data governance, the very first best practice is that um, senior leadership supports sponsors and understands the activities of data governance because at some point you're going to be at risk if they don't support sponsor and understand what you're doing. Well, the same thing can be held true for policies. You know, they both require leadership. They both undoubtedly require approval and knowledge as to why these policies are being put into place. And they're not going to be uh, approved unless the people at the top parts of the organization who sign off on these policies really understand what they're all about. So they both certainly feel invasive unless you sell it otherwise to the organization. And you can use the term non-invasive to say, okay, well, we already have policies and we already have people that have responsibility for data. We need to formalize that accountability as we move forward. So just like comparing apples to apples, you can compare apples to oranges, and we can talk about the differences of data governance and policy management. So I stated that there's a lot, bunch of similarities between the two and even in the definitions of the two, but there's also differences as well. So data governance really focuses on data and information and metadata. You've heard data governance. You've probably heard information governance. I've spoken a lot about metadata governance. And by saying that the data, the information, and the metadata will not govern itself, we need to make certain that we execute and enforce authority over the management of those important assets to the organization. So that's the data governance side. And on the policy management side, it focuses on the management of the policies themselves and the information and the information about the policy and even letting people know that these policies exist and that they're expected to follow them. So. We know for sure that in the relationship between the two, they both demand execution and enforcement. Again, that's the reason I like to word it strongly because it makes people pay attention to what we're doing. Again, make sure that you define it the way it needs to for your organization, but I like to word it strongly. They're both necessary in order for an organization to be disciplined organization. So I say it's necessary, actually you could say it's required in order for your organization to become a more disciplined organization. And I say that there can be policy about data, but the fact is that there probably already is policy in place in your organization about data. It may not be called data governance policy, but you may have data classification and protection and handling policy. You know, so ha how do we handle data based on how that data is, ca is classified? How can we print it? How can we share it? How can we, do we need to lock our computer if we're showing that uh, something on the screen or even printing and destroying and retaining information? Those are all things that have to do with the data classification and the protection and handling policy. There's data security policy. There's policy around data sharing and data access. Um, many organizations that I work with have operational policy associated with data or even policy that states who the owner of that data is. If you know me, you know I kind of shy away from the term owner because it implies what I say is exactly the wrong thing. It implies that the, a person maybe owns the data rather than the organization. The term steward and stewardship and the definition of those are that it, that's when somebody takes care of something for somebody else. It should be more data stewardship policy, but many organizations do have data ownership policy. And data and metadata change management policy. I've worked with organizations that put a lot of resources into the building of their glossary and their dictionary and their data catalog. And if somebody's going to want to make change to something, there's a policy for how they go about making those types of changes. So I would venture to guess that in most of your organizations, they already have policy. They may already have a lot of policy. Uh, I've seen binders of policies within organizations. So let's talk a little bit now about how to recognize the policies that are already in place. And the first thing that I want to address on this is that, you know, first of all, some organizations are policy driven. 
some organizations are not policy driven. So let's talk a little bit about what it means to be policy driven and not. Um, what makes a policy a good policy? Where to look in your organization to see what policies you have? We'll talk about policies that govern, but I'll kind of give it away a little bit here that you know, pretty much any policy that you put in place governs. That is the purpose for having the, the policy in the first place. Um, and then applying governance to the policies themselves. So we talk about defining and producing and using data. We certainly need to talk about defining and producing and using policy because it's one thing to define it, it's one thing to produce it and get it approved, and it's another thing to make certain that it's not shelfware and it's being used by people across the organization. So let's look at the policy-driven yes or no, um, and I have a slide for yes and I have a slide for no. So uh, don't take by this slide that I say that policy is required for every organization. Some organizations are policy-driven organizations, and it's it's necessary to have policy for everything. And, and in fact, that might be some of the organizations that actually have data governance policies is because they're so policy-driven, <clears throat> they need to have a policy that defines the role of the steering committee and the, the data governance council or, or even the group that has the responsibility for implementing the governance program. And the one thing about being a policy-driven organization that's really important is that it demonstrates senior leadership support. Your senior leadership are not going to sign off on policy just willy-nilly. They're going to want to make certain that they understand the policy, that it's enforceable around the organization. So by having policy and having them sign off on the policy, it demonstrates senior leadership support. And oftentimes, the policies outline who's responsible and how we're going to enforce the rules that have been put in place by the policy, how we're going to hold people accountable, what the consequences are going to be for people that don't follow policy. But you might not be one of those organizations that are policy driven. So do you require policy? Well, the answer is no. And so there's organizations that say, we're not policy driven. You know, we work better with other terminology, guidelines and principles and, um, and visions. And I'll talk about some of those different classifications of, of policy type things here in a couple minutes. But um, certainly in some organizations, senior leadership demonstrate their support in different ways. They don't necessarily need to sign a policy. So again, your organization may be policy driven. It may not be policy driven. It's never a bad thing to have a data governance policy, but the question I get a lot is, is it necessary to have a data governance policy? And, you know, I give the best consulting answer that I can, and that is it depends. It depends on your organization. But it certainly, uh, you know, you might find that guidelines work better, you know, that you're going to enforce your rules that way. Um, it's, I'm not here to answer the question whether or not you're policy driven or not, but you can answer that question and determine whether or not a data governance policy per se is necessary or whether all the other policies that I mentioned earlier are necessary or, or are in place in your organization because you can point to them and say, look, we do have some governance taking place already. And then when it comes to governing the behaviors of people, um, that's when it really becomes more, uh, or should I say, become it, the need is to become less invasive. And because people have day jobs, they're busy uh, more than 100% of the time, and we don't want to pile on them, but we want them to help us to manage and to define and produce and use quality data across the organization. So let's talk about what makes a policy a good policy. And so there are several criteria that I've seen used and that I've used myself. And the first one is that it has to be right size for the organization, for the size of the business, the size of the audience, the, the size of the topic within your organization. You know, some organizations utilize policies that they develop internally. Some bring in policies from the outside. If you are a wholly owned subsidiary of a company, they may have policies that are in place that govern and guide your organization. So we need to right size the policy first. We need to understand that within the organization, there's a clear hierarchy of different things and a value, a value statements, strategy statements, plans, policy standards, guidelines, and so on, all the way down to the operating manuals and the operating procedures within the organization. So if you're going to look to develop a policy, you want to make certain that it fits in the appropriate place within the hierarchy, or if it's even part of the hierarchy before you get focused on it. Um, they need to be principles based, and I'm going to share with you the four core principles that I would typically include in a data governance policy, and we'll spend a little bit of time on that. But they need to be short, 
to understood, to the point, embedded within other things that we do, very clear. And so I want to provide to you some policy um, principles that I use often, you know, when organizations want to start down the path of defining a data, a data governance policy, providence needs to be in place. That's the governing bodies and the authors and the approvers, and you might have regulators that say that these things are necessary. You want to publicize it. You want to publicize the delivery, the availability, where the people can get access to it. You want to train people on it, and you want to make certain that they understand that this just has to become part of their job. This is policy. This is signed off at the top part of the organization. If you don't follow policy, there will be consequences for that. So where do we go in the organization to look to see if there is policy? So some organizations have a policy library. So you can, there's a corporate or an organizational librarian that you may be able to go to and ask them if there are policies or if they can get a list or you can get a list of the policies that are available. Another good person to go to in your organization to see if there's policies is your records and information management people, your RIM folks. They've been doing content governance. Um, now, now it's kind of being called information governance a lot of the time, um, but it, it really is closer to records management and content management. But they may know because that's part of their responsibility, you know, what policies already exist within the organization. You can go to senior leaders. You can look at orientation and training materials because we might be educating people of the organization as they come on board as to what the policies are and what needs to be followed. I know having been through that many times with different organizations that they oftentimes include lists of the policies and how the policies apply to new hires and things like that. Or you may want to go to your legal department and ask your legal department, what do we have by way of policy? Do we have a data governance policy, operating policy? You know, we want to be able to point to the policy and say, you know, we it, it, that policies are important for our organization and that perhaps we want to consider building a data governance policy for our organization. So these are all places that you can look within your organization to determine what policies exist. Some organizations even post this information online. So let's talk about which of those policies and the policies that I mentioned earlier um, govern. And I would be, and I gave it away earlier, but the fact is that all policies govern. All policies that are in place require the execution and the enforcement and the accountability. So all policies, that's pretty much the definition of a policy is that it, it's put in place to govern the organization, not necessarily always the data, but govern the organization. So all policies require kind of consequences for not doing something. That's the way the rules take place. That's if you break a law, that's like breaking a policy. There's got to be consequences for those actions of not following. And we want to make certain that we're applying governance to the policies themselves and that there are people in the organization that have the responsibility for developing policies and taking a look to see what is the structure that we as an organization follow when we're developing a policy. You don't want to create something that's totally in left field when, it, when there is a structure for what policy looks like. And you want to make sure everybody's not creating policy. You've got the appropriate people in the organization defining what policies need to be put in place and what that policy is going to look like. Look like. Somebody needs to govern the production of the policy and the development of it and the um, bringing it to the appropriate people in the organization to get their approval and to get their sign off. And then there's the governance of the policy usage, making certain that their rules are being covered or being followed, they're being enforced, there are consequences for not following the rules. Then there's the governance over the, the maintenance and the review of the policy. From time to time, we need to make certain that this, is this policy still accurate? Do we need to change things? Does it need to be updated? Is there a new technology or a new law that is in place that requires us to maintain or review the policy? And then socializing the policy, that's important as well. Somebody has to be responsible for it. So applying governance to the policies you know, you need to govern the definition of data, the production, the usage of data, the maintenance and review of data, and certainly the socialization of information about the data as well. So you want to make sure you're applying governance, you know, the execution and the enforcement of authority to the policies themselves as well. So there are a lot of relationships between data governance and uh, policy management. 
So now let's talk about using data policy to bolster your data governance program. So there's data policy governance, which we talked about a little bit before, data um, policy stewardship, which is, as again, getting people involved in the policy and, and making certain that it's communicated to the appropriate people. There's the policy approval process, using the policy to strengthen governance, and then we'll take a quick look at what it might look like in your organization. Uh, it, to, would you be able to govern data if you don't have policy? Or what is the result of, of policy or of uh, data governance if you don't have something that demonstrates that your leadership is behind it? So if you look on this screen, kind of grayed out a little bit is the definition that I used for data governance, the execution and enforcement of authority. But let's talk about the uh, execution and the enforcement of authority of the policy and making certain that we have people that are responsible and we have process for definition of policy, production, and usage, and to make people to make certain that people follow them. Um, policy for data and data-related assets. I mean, you look into seeing what policies you already have in place, and I assure you that you have data operations policies. I asked a, a client of mine if they had a data governance policy, and I was told, no, but when I arrived at my desk the next day, there were two binders of policy that were all data policies. None of them were data governance policies, but they had policies for a lot of different aspects of data management and the management of data-related assets. Metadata is one of those data-related assets that we know that if we're going to improve the visibility and the usage and the quality and value of the data in the organization, we need information about that data, and that's the metadata. And the stewards themselves, the people that are being held formally accountable for defining, producing, and using the data, they're a data-related asset as well. So we want to make certain that we incorporate things like uh, these topics into our policy governance to make certain that the policy is covering those things that are going to be necessary for us to be successful at governing data across the organization. Uh, in this slide, I, I kind of highlighted, or should I say grayed out, my definition of stewardship, the formalization of accountability of the management of data and data-related assets. Well, we want to make sure that we're formalizing the, uh, the data policy for the organization, make sure that it's not just shelfware, it's not just a document. We want to formalize accountability for all three of these, for the definition, the production, and the usage of the policy itself. Um, as I said before, and I say often, that the data won't govern itself, the information, the metadata won't govern itself. Well, the policy is not going to define, produce, and use itself. So look to see if there is a process in your organization for how policies get defined, and then look and see what data policies you already have to determine whether or not a data governance policy, per se, is necessary within your organization. And oftentimes, the, the, the steps that we go through to get a policy approved is it starts somewhere. Sometimes, especially a data governance policy, may start or begin in the data governance office or with the data governance administrator or data governance administration um, or your data governance lead or data governance manager, whatever you call the people that have the responsibility for your governance program, they may be the ones that think that the data governance policy is, needs to be in place. But oftentimes after they develop that policy, they'll take it to the sponsor or the person that's ultimately accountable for making certain that data governance happens. You know, once they've gotten feedback from the sponsor, then they update the policy and they can take it to the data governance council. I've given webinars often on data, on data governance roles and responsibilities. And the council is at the strategic level of the organization and the operating model that I share. But oftentimes it'll go from the office to the sponsor to the council before it ever makes it to the executive committee or the senior leadership of your organization. So there probably is already a, a process in place for getting policies approved within your organization. Um, we want to use the policy to strengthen data governance. So again, as I said before, it strengthens senior leadership support, sponsorship, and understanding because they are not going to sponsor it unless they are, are support it or sign it or approve it unless they are asked to do, do so. And oftentimes it's great to have a policy so you can lean back on it and people ask, well, who really cares about data governance? Well, our senior leadership does to the point that they put this policy in place. They signed off on this policy. And if they ask the question, who says the data governance is necessary? Well, obviously, if we have policy associated with data governance, it's deemed as being necessary to the organization. 
So um, auditors and the examiners may say that it's necessary. So it may not be up to you whether you're a policy-driven or not policy-driven organization. You know, the, your, your auditors and examiners may say that you're required to have a policy. A client of mine recently, their examiner said they needed an information governance policy associated with records management the management of unstructured data. And typically, policy is reserved for something that is important enough to require that level of formality in your organization. And so use the idea that other governance policy is important to already for the need to govern data and protect data. Um, but use those policies to demonstrate the value and the need that should come from a data governance policy if you decide to go that route. So um, what does data governance look like without policy? Well, as I said before, I talk about best practices a lot. And if I told you that 99% of my clients use senior leadership must support, sponsor, and understand data governance as their number one best practice, I'd be lying to you because it's more like 100% of the clients or the organizations that I work with. Now, that may not be everybody, uh, not yet, but it may be that, you know, er that all of these folks find it's important enough that they recognize that we'll be at risk if we don't achieve um, the formal governance of the data, if we don't have the senior leadership support, sponsorship, and understanding. So it is uh, it's important that um, you have something to point back at and say, well, we do have a policy. It is felt like it is important enough from the highest levels of the organization. So data governance does not require that you have a data governance policy or a policy that's called data governance policy. You probably already have governance through existing policies. It doesn't hurt your organization, though, to have a data governance policy or something that defines the four core principles that I'm going to share with you in a minute. So let's get into that right now. Let's talk about the makeup of a governance policy. And like I said, there was an earlier webinar, maybe a couple over the years that I've been doing these with Dataversity, that kind of outlined the steps that are necessary and what goes into a good data governance policy. You know, so there's different components I'll talk about. The core principles, I want to spend a little bit of time on that. I share a one pager that is a uh, that is an example of a policy with ABC Company, and that's a, a generic company. But it's just an example of some of the statements that you might include within a data governance policy. And then we'll talk again briefly about gaining approval for the policy. So, what are the different components of a data governance policy, or really any policy for that matter, in your organization? And as I said. I laid that out in a real-world data governance webinar with Dataversity back in April of 2017. The, the, the webinars around policy seem to be attended very well because a lot of organizations have that question as to whether or not policies are necessary. So oftentimes in the policy, there's an introduction of why there is a policy, what we're covering in the policy, what are the consequences of not following the policy. Then there's a policy statement, and in the sample I'm going to share with you, it has a sample policy statement. And then the principles, I'm going to spend a few minutes on the four guiding principles that I think need to be included within a data governance policy. And one of the end results are, are the different dimensions of data quality within your organization. If we're going to achieve accurate, timely, um, consistent consistent, complete, um, relevant data for our organization. That's how we measure the data, but we can also measure that in terms of policy. Are they helping us to achieve uh, improvements in any of these dimensions of quality? So the, this may be the most important slide, this in the next couple slides, may be the most important slide of, of the slide deck if you're thinking about creating a data governance policy. And they're the guiding principles. And I have a graphic I'm going to show you that I've used and I've shared over the years of where these kind of fit in the whole picture of uh, a data governance policy. But the first one is one that we've heard all too often, maybe not too often, maybe not often enough, that data is an asset to the organization. And it needs to be recognized and it needs to be valued in such a way and it needs to be, needs to be managed as if data is a strategic enterprise asset. And that could be data, it could be information, which I uh, say information is data plus the metadata, the context, turns it into information. And the metadata itself is a valuable asset to the organization. The accountability for the data is clearly defined and enforced. 
That's necessary. Anybody who's developed a data governance program knows that the roles and responsibilities and who's accountable for what um, is uh, is really necessary as the backbone of your program. And uh, it, it needs to be clearly defined and enforced across your organization. That is what is, everything is related to those roles and responsibilities. And the whole concept of stewardship and formalizing accountability for the management of data we need to understand who's accountable. I've had some organizations tell me we have no accountability. Well, the chances are that you wouldn't be a 20-year-old company with 50 locations around the world if you're not, if accountability isn't really something that's important to your organization. Data is managed to follow internal and external rules and regulations. I mean, that's a, that's a no-brainer. We know that there's rules and we're not, they're not coming to us and asking us if we want to follow, um, follow these rules. They're telling us that we have to figure out the best way within our organization to follow these rules. Data quality is managed and defined consistently across the data life cycle. That's the fourth um, guiding principle. So I'm just going to go through these real quickly again. Data is recognized as a valued and strategic enterprise asset. That's the first guiding principle. The second one is that accountability for the data is clearly defined, meaning that somebody needs to be responsible for it. We need people to recognize themselves as being accountable, and we can certainly, as data governance practitioners, help them to do that. That the data is managed to follow the rules. Again, the no-brainer of the group is we know. They're not asking us. They're telling us we need to follow these rules. We need to determine what the best way is to do that. And then that the data quality is defined and managed consistently across the data life cycle. So those four guiding principles, and you may have seen this diagram before, maybe in this format, maybe in a different format, where they are just right down the middle of the diagram. As, as you can see, the guiding principles right smack dab in the middle of the diagram, and then they all have like these bubbles that come out of them that are like, how do we put this into common people's language? Um, you know, instead of saying it's valued as a, a strategic asset, removing it from being my data to our data, or that data has to become everybody's responsibility, or we want to get things right the first time. So they're just kind of talking points around each of those principles. But your vision statement and your policy guideline statement um, basically needs to be, break, be broken down into these principles, and they need to be measured in such a way in the organization that you can demonstrate value to the organization. And again, the dimensions that I mentioned quickly, you know, accessibility, accuracy, completeness, consistency, all of those things are really important when it comes to trusting and knowing the, the guidelines. Uh, for how we improve the quality and the value of the data in the organization. So here is a sample data governance policy, ABC, the Ardvark Brewery Company. I don't know what ABC stands for, but the company's policy is designed to manage the creation, transformation, and usage of data and related information owned by or in care of the company. The policy applies to everybody in the organization, employees, contractors, temp temps, consultants, authorized agents. Um, it is the policy of the company to require that all data defined, produced, and or used by the organization in care of the company must be governed as a resource that's going to help our company to move forward. All users must maintain the quality and the integrity of the data resources. Violations of this policy, I said, we need to put consequences in there as well. So violations of the policy may be considered a serious breach of, breach of trust, which can result in disciplinary action. There have to be consequences in place for not following policy. So um, I spoke a little bit before about gaining the approval for the data governance policy. First, we need to recognize that there's a need for a policy, utilize whatever organizational construct there is for policy and don't create something that looks uh, you know, very unique, but, but follow the marching orders that your organization has set up for policy, draft the policy, validate the policy with the sponsor, present it to the strategic level, the, the council, then take once it's set, you get them to concur that this is the right thing to do, take it to the executive level for signature. That's going to demonstrate. They're not going to sign it if they don't believe it, they don't trust it, they don't um, think that it is necessary, 
for your organization. So a signed policy is a way to be able to demonstrate support, sponsorship, and understanding of data, within, or of data and the need for data policy in the organization. So we want to make certain that as part of this, after it's been approved, that we socialize the policy to the organization through orientation of people to the policy, through onboarding when they're being asked to actually do something that, that has to, something to do with the policy that's been defined, and then enforcing the policy with consequences. I keep saying that, and it's really important that it's not really a policy that people are going to follow unless they understand that there are consequences for that policy. So the last subject that I want to touch upon here is, um, is having a policy to manage data policies um, data, data, or should I say policy management policy, that sounds like meta policy, uh, like metadata, but uh, talking about the drivers and the policy purposes, expanding policies through policy, comparing policies to other things like guidelines and standards, and what are some of the alternatives that we have when we're looking at policy, um, why do we put policy in place, to demonstrate senior leadership backing, to increase the awareness of people across the organization as to the importance of governing data. That would be the reason why we would put a data governance policy into place to formalize authority. To who are the decision makers within the organization? How do we take something and get a decision made? And also to formalize accountability. Again, back to my definition of what a data steward does is we formalize accountability for the way people define, produce, and use data across the organization. I know I keep talking about the consequences for lack of adherence. That's really a driver as well. If we want people to utilize data to protect data the way it needs to be protected, then we need to make certain that there are consequences for not following the rules. And it also helps to document the importance of data governance to the organization. So formalize your method um, for your policy requirements and development. Formalize your method for how you're going to structure and build your policy. Formalize how you're going to take these policies through the organization to get them approved, and make sure that you keep record of the policy and that you communicate them and take them off the shelf and make them necessary for people to know. They don't necessarily need to remember them word for word, but they know you need to know that you have policies associated with this, that, and the other. There's certainly policy around entry into a building. Yeah. Remember the days when people used to do that? Well, that's going to happen again. So, you know, what, what's access policy look like even to the organization? We need to make certain that people know what policies are available and that data governance and data management policies might be included in those, or they're already being included. People just need to know that they're existing and what it means to them. And you also need a formal process for reviewing and maintaining the policies. Like I said, Business rules can change, uh, re regulations can change, um, business can change. So you want to make certain that you're doing all sorts of, the, of those things. So comparison, uh, now let's just real quickly compare the policy to the guidelines, to standards, to agreements. A policy is an approved course of action. A guideline is a provided instruction of behavior, oftentimes referred to as the guide rails. You know, we've got to do things. Uh, we've got to follow these rules at least, but there are more guidelines. They're not signed off on. I don't know organizations that have their guidelines signed off at the senior leadership level. Standards are requirements that need to be followed. And, and so it's different than policy. It gets, starts getting into the nuts and bolts of you know, there are data quality standards. There's data definition standards. What do we need to include within a definition? And then arrangements are even less formalized. They're, they're just kind of put in place to formalize people's understanding of what's necessary within the organization. So those things are all different. And then there's alternatives to policy as well. There's rules, there's strategies, plans, procedures, directives, agreements. And I've provided definitions for each of these things. You know, the rules depend on the formality and the requirements to follow them. The strategies typically come from a higher part of the organization. It's kind of a direction and a vision for the organization is included in your strategy. Your plans are really how you're going to carry out the actions that are necessary to enforce the policy across the organization. Procedures include the steps to complete those actions. The directives, those typically come from senior leadership stating that, uh, that this is what we need to do. This is what we need to follow. And the agreements are basically getting people to commit to following the rules. You've heard of, you know, shared, uh, shared, 
or SLA or service level agreements within organizations. When they sign off on those, they're agreeing, they're committing to follow certain rules that are defined for the organization. So the last slide before I kind of do a quick summary and then turn it back over to Shannon, just talks about policy management policy. So we need a formal method for how policies come into existence. And you know what? We need to govern that whole process of creating the policies. We need a plan for defining and producing and using the policies across the organization, a plan for who creates the policies, how we're going to get them approved, and the term that I wouldn't be surprised that if someday would somebody would start talking about it is meta policy. What is the policy of our organization around the development and the delivery and the uh, uh, the consequences that are, are are required if people don't follow policy? So. In this uh, 50 minutes, I shared with you a bunch of information about data governance and policy management. I talked about the relationship between governance and policy and provided my definition of each of those. I shared some ideas as to how to recognize what policies are already in place in your organization. Talked about using the policies to help bolster your data governance program to demonstrate your senior leadership, support, sponsorship, and understanding. We spent a little bit of time talking about the makeup of the data governance policy and specifically those four guidelines that are often included within or, or are similar to the principles that are provided within a data governance policy. And then we Last thing we talked about was having a policy itself to manage policies, to manage data policies across the organization. So thank you for listening to this session. And with that, I uh, will tell you that I will be in the data diversity community after this webinar is over. But I wanted to turn it over to Shannon or back over to Shannon to see if we have any questions today. Bob, thank you so much. Um, and just to answer the most commonly asked questions, uh, just a reminder, I will send the up email by end of day Monday for this webinar with links to the slides, recording, and anything else requested throughout. So diving in here, Bob, to the questions, I have two questions. One, uh, how do you apply this data governance policy rationale for national data strategies? And two, could you please further develop your point on the role of auditors in the context of data policies? Well, um, so that's the first part of the question again, and then I'll answer that in the auditors. Sure. Uh, how do you apply this data governance policy rationale for national data strategies? Well, national data strategies and even global data strategies may start with the fact that we've created this, this strategy because we have a policy that says that we need to have it in place. So I think it just kind of further cements the, the whole idea that um, that this is something that is recognized and that is important across the organization. And so, again, the second part of that question was? Is, uh, could you please further develop your point on the uh, role of auditors in the context okay. of data policy? And so, oftentimes, you know, and I just used as the example during the webinar that the examiners for a recent client of mine said um, one of the things that was the result of their examination report was that there was no policy associated with the protection of classified information or the protection of sensitive information. So they told this client, you need to have an information governance policy in place so that there is, um, so that the steps are documented and required and people know them. It's been communicated to people that we need to do this. So the examiners and the auditors actually can help to define, well, what do we think the external auditors are going to do? I'd start by working with the internal auditors, say, well, what do we anticipate some of the questions of the external auditors to be? And let's make certain that we put a policy in place that will help us as an organization to address what the examiners and what the auditors are looking for. And do you think C-level support would be necessary? Senior leadership tend to be very territorial and sway to different directions when things get controversial. I not only think it's very important, but I, I would say it's critical that uh, if you don't have senior leadership supporting, sponsoring, and understanding what you're doing, that you are going to become at risk very early on in the development of your program, in the enforcement of your program. And I, I mentioned throughout the webinar that one of the ways to, for them to demonstrate their support, sponsorship, and understanding is for them to sign the policy. 
And you're right, some of the leadership, uh, leadership can be territorial and can be specifically looking out for their own needs, but that's not typically at the highest level of the organization. You know, they're going to be saying, well, what are we doing that's in the best, uh, the best interest of our constituents across the entire organization? Um, you, I, at least I've rarely experienced um, that organizations have policies only set up for certain divisions within the organization. If it's important enough to be a policy, it's important enough to be a policy for the entire organization. And just kind of to add on to that, um, but does data governance enforce the policy? That's a big barrier for us. It has to be senior ownership and accountability. Well, they can help to enforce it, but they're not the data police. So I, I don't like that term, data governance, you know, data police. That's not what their responsibility is. Their responsibility is to make certain that the things are in place, the components of successful governance are in place. So, you know, I'm not sure that data governance itself is going to police the policy, but they can report occurrences of the policy not being followed. So um, they're not there to uh, to come by and to take you away from your desk and put you into data jail in your organization. They're not policing it that way, but they are monitoring. And, and the data governance group, you know, if they're working uh, significantly with other parts of the organization, they know what behavior is taking place. And if there's behavior that goes against the policy, they need to bring that to the attention of senior leadership. They're not the ones that are going to reprimand. They're not going to be the ones that provide the consequences. Uh, or I'm not talking about the data governance office or the data governance team, but that has to come from the top. If people can get away with breaking policy without any consequences, people are going to get to the point where they don't feel as though the policy even means anything and therefore it's kind of a, uh, it's not even necessary within the organization. And what is the relationship between policies and standards? Do all policies need accompanying standards so that they know clearly how to follow the policies? Well, I would say they do need information about how to follow the policies, but the standards that probably a lot of people on this call are talking about are, are the data standards, data quality standards. Um, I don't know if they're called standards within policies. I'm not that much of a, a policy developer to know that in all sorts of policies that they have standards, but they might have guidelines as to what people need to do to follow the state, to follow the policy itself. I don't know. Um, if you have a data quality policy, it might include the standards around those dimensions that I spoke about earlier, but um, they're not, you know, you're not necessarily going to have standards in every policy. In fact, a lot of the policies, and the one that I shared did not have a section in it that was called standards. Again, look to see what already exists in your organization as a construct for policies. And if it does, it does have standards, then by all means, include those within your policy. And Bob, can the uh, DMBAC or the Data Management Body of Knowledge Wheel be used to guide the development of policies and standards? So I don't know the DMBOC that well. I know of it. I have a copy of it, and then it's not something that I've read front to back. I, I don't know if there's a section in there around data policy, but I would think that you could get a lot of disciplines and a lot of ideals from the DMBOC. It would be very beneficial. It's very much a great way to start a course of study around data management. It, it has a lot of different disciplines in place. So I would think, yeah, you would benefit from incorporating some of the ideas that come from DMBOC into your policy, but I'm not sure that they, I, I, don't, I could be wrong, somebody could correct us in the chat here if they know that there is a section in the uh, DMBOC about the, uh, about the development of a policy. I would think that, that there's a fairly good chance that there is. All right, well, I think I can slip in one more question here. And if you have additional questions, keep them coming in. I will send them over to Bob, who will write up answers for you uh, to be included in the follow-up email. So what are the most important policies to begin with in a new data governance program? Most important policies? Well, you can always point at your information security policy, because data protection and data classification and making certain that sensitive data, that is data that's rated highly confidential or confidential, even sensitive, you know, basically any data that's not open data or public data 
that there's rules associated with it. Um, there is oftentimes data retention policy within an organization. How long do we need to save uh, to save the data, to keep the data around for legal reasons? Um, so data retention would be another one. Data access would be one as well. Data privacy policy. A lot of those have to do with similar items, but that would be where I would look first. Um, I don't know of, of as many organizations that have data quality policy. At, that uh, I don't know as many of those that have that type of policy as compared to those that have you know, data protection and data privacy policy. So I'd start with information security, privacy, you know, those types of regulatory controls, and then work from, work your way out from there. I love it. Well, Bob, thank you so much for another fantastic presentation. Appreciate it, as always. And thanks to all of our attendees for being so engaged in everything we do. Very much appreciate it. And again, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday for this webinar with links to the slides and links to the recording. Hope you all have a great day and stay safe out there. Bob, thanks so much. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, all.